this short talk about the report from Nordic Welfare Center about the new research they have seen into universal design and social economics analysis. My name is Kristin Hallevang and I've been working for 17 years with universal design in Norway in an umbrella organization for all municipalities and all regions in Norway. With me I have Lars Lindberg from Nordic Welfare Center. Lars, can you tell me a bit about yourself and also give a short explanation about the Nordic Welfare Center? What is it? Thank you, Christian. Uh, my name is Lars Lindberg and uh, the Nordic Welfare Center, where I work at, uh, uh, as a senior advisor and project manager, is, uh, is um, can say, an organ organization that the institution that the work uh, with the supporting the Nordic countries on the behalf of the government to uh, develop a welfare policy and also by gathering uh, best practice, knowledge, and uh, distribute research, uh, results. Thank you. And we have office both in Stockholm and in uh, Helsinki in Finland. That's very nice. Can you explain me why you and the Nordic Welfare Center did this report on socioeconomic analysis on un universal design? We published a report uh, about uh, socioeconomic analysis and uh, universal, uh, universal design and accessibility uh, in uh, December last year. And uh, there was an outcome of a project mm. that uh, was commissioned by uh, the BUFTE, which is uh, a Norwegian directorate uh, authority that uh, which coordinates the implementation of uh, universal design in Norway. And uh, they wanted to uh, ask to uh, mapping different kind of uh, socio-economic analysis that have been uh, conducted in uh, the Nordic uh, countries. Um, and um, because in Norway they are conducting is quite common, but they wanted to get uh, know that what have been done in, uh, in other countries. So we did uh, uh, what could say an, uh, an international. Uh, uh, at first, a um, uh, Nordic mapping of different kinds of studies that uh, have been conducted, but we found very few in Sweden, Finland, and so on. So most of them was done in, in uh, international. So we did an international um, studies instead. And Lars, can you explain to me how the project was conducted? What did you do? What did you do? Uh, what did you do? Uh, yeah, but the, the, uh, the, the most important uh, of the, the study that was uh, conducted, we can see that there's a lot of uh, different studies uh, on, on the different areas. For instance, we can see that uh, in ICT, uh, transport sector, bo uh, live, um, built environment, and, uh, and, and uh, housing, for instance. So we try to find this kind of studies that have been conducted. And uh, many of them uh, also we can find uh, are uh, conducted in, uh, in Australia and the uh, US and the uh, United Kingdom. And, and why are they done? They are done because usually there are some kind of uh, impact assessment requirement. And uh, what you can see is that in many countries have a some of legal framework where they uh, need to do some kind of impact assessment when they are proposing new legislation or bigger investment. Uh, this way is uh, typical for Norway, for instance. But in Sweden, from where I come from, there is not that kind of uh, formal uh, framework. So we can see that the. Uh, and there uh, have been more and more of uh, demands for um, impact assessment that also is in some way estimate, try to estimate the cost and benefits of uh, accessibility university design. You that also have been more proposal of uh, legislation regarding accessibility. And that is uh, the main reason for this is, is that due to the European Commission and European Union. Um, has uh, proposed uh, different kinds of uh, directives, the web accessibility directive, accessibility directive, and so on. 
And therefore, there also have been more of a demand of these kind of uh, studies. Mm. Yeah, so you have partly answered my next question, because my next question is, is about why do we need socioeconomic analysis of universal design and accessibility? But can you say something more about this? Or? Uh, I mean, uh, the many of the reasons why they are uh, done it, uh, one is because of the demand of uh, impact assessment, but it's also, you can see, uh, our uh, mapping, we focused, we, uh, we mapped the 45 different studies and, uh, uh, in, this, in different uh, sectors, but we can see w one p big part th of the studies are because of the impact assessment requirements, but there are also uh, many studies that try to f map what kind of uh, um, benefits there are thanks to uh, accessibility for other groups than people with disabilities. I mean, but people are not, have a not have a disability, like uh, uh, as a part of uh, comfort measures and so on. So we can see that, uh, and then we are trying to see what we can see also, the, the, the way they are doing it is thanks like uh, the willingness to pay estimation, which means that the uh, to try to see um, how much people are prepared to pay, for instance, for a ticket on a uh, bus or a train. Uh, if you want to pay more, if there are also uh, measures like uh, bus stop, um, benches at bus stops or better lighting and so on. In many situations, you can see that these studies show that uh, many people also are prepared to pay more. But there are also measures that is not so very uh, obvious for people who are not have a disability, like uh, audio loop for hearing impaired. People are not so much prepared for to pay more uh, on the ticket to have an audio loop in the bus, for example, because don't, they don't need it. So it's very clear this is a measure that is very beneficial to people with disabilities, but maybe it's not so obvious for other people. Very interesting. Could you say something about what was the mind finding in the report? Mind finding? Who would find? Mind finds. What, what did you find? The mind things you find? Uh, okay. Um, uh, can you show it? Because I don't hear you what you're saying. Ah, the main finding in the report uh, is uh, that. Uh, that you can see there are m many different uh, ways to conduct these studies. You have a study that does your observation, you try to see how people are be behaving uh, when you are in a uh, bus, for instance. And there are uh, studies that show, for instance, that uh, the people are, like I said, uh, willing to pay. In many situations, you can see uh, that uh, the benefits um, are really uh, uh, greater than the cost. But it's also that it are, you can see that there are challenges when conducting these studies. And the main reason is because it's uh, difficult to find the causal relationship between the outcome of, uh, of the measures. Like in terms of if you see that there were um, um, do different kind of measures for accessibility and if you try to uh, see, uh, estimate the outcome for uh, uh, life participation uh, and empl employment market and, uh, and uh, also if they have a better benefits to get education, for instance, then we'll f find that uh, this is not very easy to, to get the data. Uh, and also uh, for this kind of uh, outcome, uh, results or an effect. That is a challenge many studies have. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see that also there are other things that uh, that's also a little bit uh, complicated also to, uh, uh, to find, as I said, a causal relationship between the two. You can see you, uh, you have a, an, an, uh, a measure and then you have the effect and see uh, that also uh, is, uh, there's uh, some kind of causal relationship between it. Um, 
the, the last thing also I can say that it is not the, uh, unique for this kind of studies. It's uh, uh, something that most studies in this social economic studies are struggling with. Mm. So that is uh, complicated to conduct these kind of studies in general. What are the challenges encountered in this uh, analysis? Uh, I don't know. So, so, uh, I mean, the, the challenges, as I said, it's uh, uh, complicated to to get the data, and uh, the, the needs I think also more of uh, we need more of um, uh, better method for evaluation, for instance. And uh, it is also very complicated to, uh, I mean, uh, also mapping. But I also think we need to develop uh, this kind of studies because I think we also the, 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 the definition of cost constants is usually um, defined as a cost of uh, uh, the measurement, uh, the measurement of uh, um, uh, accessibility, but there also a cost constants like uh, inaccessibility uh, has a cost, like uh, and that's because uh, people with disability are also very much affected by inaccessibility, by uh, lower opportunity for work and so on. And that which you need something also need to calculate uh, and uh, the consequences for health and so on. Uh, so they also need, I think, uh, 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 something we need to develop the measures in many ways. But I think the main uh, benefit of our studies or mapping is that we get a, a picture of many ki different kind of measures that uh, have been uh, used for this kind of uh, studies and so on. Okay, a last question before you we finish. How are the Nordic Welfare Center going to use this report in future? Okay. Uh, the way we do in the future, we will also uh, uh, try to. Uh, we have that uh, there was as there was an assignment from Bufta, which means that it's, it's they have gotten the report. So this, uh, their intention is to develop uh, the studies, and also because in Norway you are conducting one of the studies. So I hopefully there will be a more development of. Uh, the studies as a ground, so then we are sharing it. The, study, the report we have conducted are in Swedish, but it is uh, an extensive summary of the report and also uh, a summary of uh, 45 studies in, uh, uh, in an uh, appendix. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for uh, listening to us. Thank you.